a transparent bright yellow that I'm about to put on these yellow perch. They're going to be yellow perch. They're not now. They're Mike Buchan's herring. They're resin baits in the Bullshad line. You can get them online at www.bullshad.com. So these are normally herring, and I normally paint them in a herring pattern, but the cool thing about yellow perch is that they are exactly this size and this shape in a juvenile stage at the six to seven inch range. So the only thing that I've done with these so far is I've placed black on the spine and a little bit on the nose. Let's paint something cool. So you notice that there was no rhyme or reason. I just made a few lines vertically on these perch with the bright yellow, which is a Createx, a Createx transparent paint. I'm now coming back with an iridescent yellow and I'm filling in the details that I missed. So I want this to be three or four different colors of yellow an accent because that's going to represent a perch moving through the water. There's actually going to be several layers on this on this particular pattern. Um, most of them are going to be golds and yellows. There's going to be some color shift on here as well. Um, it's a fairly simple pattern. As we go along, I'm just filling in what I didn't paint with the uh, with the bright yellow. So add a little bit more into the cup here and you can see that perch in the upper section of this bait and I don't know if you can also kind of see what's happening with the black on the spine when you have black and then you add yellow on top of it you get a little bit of a greenish hue which is cool it happens every single time it's not just an anomaly I'm also going to add a little bit of Wicked Gold, and I'm going to spot those in. It's not going to make a whole lot of difference um, right now, but it is going to build depth as a pattern later on in, in this build here. So I've got a little stencil. It's also a stencil that I use uh, all the time on different, like, peacock bass. So I'll use that for lines and stuff. It's just a good general all-around pattern. I've used this stencil to make bass markings. I've used it to make um, bowfin and snakehead markings. And you can get it at Amazon. I will leave a link in the description below. So that should be the end of this yellow. I think it looks pretty good. Hopefully you guys are doing well today. Welcome. This is um, this is the next morning. So I got home from work late last night. Um, gosh, it was probably like 9 o'clock when I got home. So sat down, put the actual video together, and now I'm doing the voiceover. It was very loud at Bullshed yesterday. Um, lots of sound bleed and stuff. So I decided to do the, uh, the voiceover here in the studio at home. And that's, um, I've been doing that here and there. It seems to be going pretty well. I have noticed that my microphone settings, I'm unable to change with this particular microphone uh, enough to where I don't have to go back and boost it through the uh, audio director and sound design afterwards uh, just to get my, my voice up loud enough to where you guys can hear it. This is a Illustration Black 5051 from Createx and I a lot of people ask me what kind of paints I use I use a lot of different paints I use a lot of lacquers I use a lot of things that you don't normally see on these videos I specifically try to stay with Createx and different things of that nature that are water-based acrylic paints for the ease of you guys learning if you want specific videos 
for uh, those other types of things like alcohol inks and lacquer I will be more than happy to do that drop me a comment I always like to know what you want to learn and that helps me kind of tailor my videos but for the purpose of the spray sessions it just makes it easier if I go ahead and do a water-based acrylic type deal This is actually a bluegill stencil, so if you guys are looking at this, this is the stencil that I use on some of the larger swim baits, our, um, our HD trick gills, and it's not the only stencil I use, but it makes a really good, if you look at the bottom of this, it makes a really good perch because there are seven lines usually on a perch. Sometimes there's more, sometimes there's a little bit less, but the general rule of thumb with yellow perch is seven. Um, this just puts down a perfect seven on the width of this bait, or the length rather, of this bait. So that's what I'm using on these. And I've got a run of three. Um, I'm going to be dropping these on my website. So um, one thing that uh, you guys may or may not know if you've followed me for a long time. Um, I don't just work for other people. I've owned Jekyll Bait Company since 2015, been incorporated as a limited liability corporation, self-employed, um, left my job behind, um, which at the time was um, market asset protection, asset protection with Walmart. Um, I've done a lot of things aside from that. But anyways, um, so I have my own website as well, which is www.jekyllbaits.com. And I occasionally drop uh, resin swim baits and crank baits and things that are ready to ship. Um, I drop those. So, which means if you're unfamiliar with what a drop is, it's uh, a specific amount, number, limited number of baits that are ready to ship that are put on a website at a specific time. So, um, these are going to be going on the website for you, for your availability, at least two of them. One of them, I think, is already pre-designated. Um, but that's that's totally cool so you can pick these things up now they are resin swim baits if you're not familiar with resin if this is one of the first videos of mine that you've watched and you're completely unfamiliar with the swim bait world hand poured resin is much more expensive than the um, ABS plastics that a lot of you guys as crankbait painters are painting or throwing if you're a tournament fisherman or you're just a weekend recreational angler um, they're all hand poured. They come from a hand built mold at Bullshed Swim Baits. And Mike has been doing this for the better part of 20 years. Um, he's been incorporated as a limited liability corporation with Bullshed Swim Baits here in Ackworth, Georgia um, for a very long time. So it's just a, a really interesting, durable bait. Um, the bigger baits get bit. If you know anything about the swimming, uh, the swim bait and fishing industry, it is almost the last frontier. So these swim baits go. Sometimes, if you look on Tackle Warehouse, the Roman-made mothers that are wood that come out of Japan. Sometimes they go for like crazy amounts of money, like five hundred, a thousand dollars. I've seen just insane prices. Ours are more affordable. So on the website at bullshed.com you can get the unpainted OG versions of these that usually come in a couple of different colors for herring I think there's bone and then there's like a thread finny type color um, usually for about sixty dollars but again I know a lot of people are like oh my gosh sixty bucks it's hand poured it's a resin bait it's made specific gravity to to have a specific rate of fall and they are super, super durable. And folks, if you don't know anything about swim baits, they get bit. They get bit with not always bigger fish. A lot of people are like, oh, those are the size of the fish that I normally catch. Yeah, I get that. We hear that all the time. Um, but smaller fish, a lot of tournament fishers, if you watch Bassmaster, a lot of tournament fishermen and lady anglers are starting to really use swim baits a lot more frequently. Um, it's just a great, great thing to have in your arsenal. So if you want to check them out, they are going to be available, at least these three, probably a couple more. Um, 
on Jekyll Bates. So there will be a link in the description. There's always a link in the description below. Going back to the same stencil that I was using before, um, just to add in a little bit of detail on the uh, on the bellies and the cheeks of these, just to give it a little bit more of a natural look. And it's not I'm, I'm not doing super crisp, super sharp lines because that's just going to fade in to the background. So hopefully your week is going well. I hope you guys are painting furiously and able to enjoy things other than the spray session as well. I hope you guys are painting and learning and if you guys are making money at this I would like to know. I think it's really cool. Um, I don't know that I specifically got into this to teach. Um, I think things just kind of manifest and morph as you go along in a career or a hobby. Um, I started out before I even had a concept of starting a company I wanted to see if I could catch a fish on a bait that I painted. So uh, that concept started in Maryland and then when the opportunity came up for me to be able to move to Arkansas and live a little bit more financially less burdened, if that makes any sense, um, I was able to do that and I was very blessed to be able to have a paid off mortgage and work out of my garage. I cashed in my 401k, um, bought a little um, Bass Pro Group, the, uh, their, their uh, aluminum boats. I had, a, I had a Pro 170 and I used that for a while. We used it. Um, I ended up selling that because I really like kayaks better. This is that, there we go, that Mission Models Pearl Starship White. Um, I really love this. I use it on so much now um, just to give it a little bit of pop as opposed to a plain white. So I'll place these down on the belly and you'll see that um, I'm going to do a couple of other things with stencils as well. So, but I'm just going to add, and this helps fade the, uh, the, the bottom of the, the perch lines in a little bit. Just kind of mutes that ever so slightly. So I would say we're probably about halfway through this pattern. We still have a little bit to go, um, but it's just a just a fun little perch pattern to do. If you guys have any questions, or you guys get stuck on a specific place where you're learning, by all means, let me know. Now this is the Wicked White, and I'm putting that over a wet pearl starship white because it's going to blend pretty well and what you're going to see me do is I have just like a random stencil I don't even know where it came from I just happened to be going through all my stuff the other day and I found this thing and I'm like this would make a really cool belly um, just to kind of do something different a apologies I wasn't sure how this was going to translate when I started spraying it um, so I think I'm checking the camera as I go throughout the, this process, this part of the process. But this is kind of breaking up the, uh, the yellow on the base of this and giving that white belly in somewhat of a unique pattern. I really, uh, this was a cool find and I can't for the life of me remember who makes this stencil. Um, I think it was probably off of one of the Amazon ones. I'm going to look for it, and if I can find it and see where I got it, I will certainly pass that information on to you guys. So there we have that. I'm doing one side at a time, like I normally do. Um, it wouldn't matter if there were three of these or 30 of these. The process is very similar. Uh, when I'm doing a run of baits, I like to start out with one single color and just move down the line. It's an assembly line. And I've kind of fallen in love with watching. Uh, I'm kind of pouring through as many videos as I can from overseas because I'm trying to get tips on better production um, value. Not necessarily just race through everything quick, but anytime that we can find a little bit better way to do things that not only speeds us up, but makes us more efficient uh, without sacrificing quality. I'm all for it. 
So there's just so many resources available today to those of us that are painting and those of us that are into pretty much anything you want to find. You can find it on YouTube, you can find it on TikTok, like there's just so many avenues to pursue that we didn't have when when I was starting this out. There was maybe, we were talking about this on a forum on Facebook, there were maybe three or four when I started painting. So I'm trying to think who was already out there. I think Marling was making videos, mostly woodworking. Um, Marling was there. Um, I think Solar Falls has been around for a long time. Jonas Summer, uh, he, he now has follow forms. If he's got some of the most insanely cool, like rats and um, almost like decayed zombie type forms that are, are crankbaits. They're just super cool. But he used to do painting, and I don't think he ever spoke on his videos, but he um, would show you like step by step as he was painting along. It was just like really cool. He produced it to the nines. It was just probably the, the best produced videos out there at the time. You had Lure Me In Custom Crankbaits, which is Michael Ornstein. Um, he was actually one of my original mentors just because he was teaching people. Like you didn't see a whole lot of people giving away secrets and stuff like that. So Michael did. Um, so he was instrumental in my upbringing, or upstart. Um, I learned a lot of things from a lot of different people and I think I'm still learning those today and for those of you that are just getting started in the community there's just so many places that you can learn from which is super cool I hope that I give you some value to to these things as well so I have got these finished up I like the way that stencil worked with this belly um, just something different. I like to try and do things different and uniquely so that it's not copying other people. And we'll, I'm just going to go kind of all over the place here. This is a, a scaled tip. Uh, instead of just doing the whole scales, this is just the edges, the tips. And because it's a perch and I don't want to be too contrasting, I chose Liquitex Gold to do this because it's super shiny and super metallic. So I'm just placing over the, uh, over the fins and then I'm going to go back and do a couple more. It's just going to give a hint of suggestion that there are actual scales on this pattern. And you'll find that stenciling and, um, and spraying don't always go hand in hand. I, there we go. So I, you guys, have, if you've spent any time with me this year since I've gotten the iPhone 15 Pro Max, which I love iPhones, I've never had an issue. Boy, I cannot get the focus to ship, uh, shift in depth. So they normally are doing that um, really well. The lenses will shift over, but for some reason on this Pro Max, it just doesn't. It's a, it's a very difficult thing to get it to, to focus. If you hear dogs in the background, I apologize. I'm doing voiceovers from my studio at home. Um, versus being in the shop and doing it live because there was again so much sound bleed yesterday at the studio while I was doing this and now it looks like the entire flipping screen is out of focus and I apologize for that um, sometimes when I'm filming I can't necessarily see what's happening um, on the screen while I'm shooting this so you guys can pretty much make out what I'm doing with the scales and I'm having to clean them off as I go but I'm really wanting some somewhat of a comprehensive look at the scales. And again, my apologies for not having this in focus. It's like a soft focus, so just pretend that this is a, an actual cinema <laughs> cinema shot. Um, yeah, sorry about that, guys. I did, had no idea that this was out of focus until right now. So it looks like the background is in focus again. Golly, there we go. Now it's now it's starting to focus on its own. I've never seen anything like it. And I use my phone because the lenses and the and shooting in 4K is like a tremendous value because I generally like to make sure you guys have a sharp, crisp screen that you're working with. So this stencil comes from in, uh, not insane. I always want to say that. It's not insane. I love Russ Allen to death. 
but this is another Brian Best at Anarchy Model Stencil UK, which I think you can find his stuff on Amazon now. I'm pretty sure that a lot of his stuff is uh, is available in the States. He's, uh, he's across the pond in uh, Great Britain, which is cool. And he is very generous with the airbrushing community. We usually get a chance, I get a chance to try out some of his stuff. He'll be like, hey, how do you like this? How is this going? And then we put these in the videos. So I'll get a care package from him like a couple of times a year with new things that are coming out. I have yet to try his pike and musky patterns. Um, they're sitting in a, in a bag in my office and I really want to do that. So I think on one of the future videos, I'm going to do a pike pattern for you guys which is also a really cool thing that I don't do enough of is um, drill down. I used to do an aquarium series and I used to do like a specific different parts of the world series. Um, I've done Murray Cod for Australia which is pretty cool. So I know that it's not just America that's watching me and I respect and appreciate that. So we are quickly approaching a thousand videos on this YouTube channel and I would not be able to pull that off without all of you guys so I really appreciate you being on here with me just about finishing up the scale tips and towards the end of the video you're going to be able to see those um, those edges you can see them now um, but I'm going to give you a walk around after the video is complete we still have a few a few little pieces to put into this puzzle. Uh, going to be getting out some red and orange here and adding on the peck fins and just a little section under the underside of the tail or on the on the resin part, not the tail itself. I've got that taped over. Um, one of the things that I wish was a little bit easier with bullshed swim baits was taping tails. And the, what, for whatever reason, and of course I think I know the reason, but um, the tails just don't want to adhere to tape. Like you, it's very difficult; they slip off. So, and I and I'm, the reason that I'm not going to say as to why I think it is because it's proprietary to the way Mike builds. It's just one of those things. So what I've found is that after I sand the bait, it's a little bit easier to tape tails off if I'm using um, like the hair tail baits in what I'm painting. So we're doing some Vallejo shifters now, and this is, if you guys haven't watched any of my other videos, the Vallejo shifters are color shift paints that are pre-mixed that come from Vallejo, which if you know anything about models, um, like the 3D models and gaming models and car models. Um, these guys have kind of made their mark in the paint world for that community. And they've got some really fantastic shifter paint. And it comes in sets of six. They carry three different sets. And I can drop those links in the below. And yeah, I can drop those links in the description below as well. Um, it's it's about 5.30 in the morning as I'm doing this. I'm sitting here with my coffee. I've already fed the dogs. They're doing well. The picture in the screen, it is, I'm not giving this perch that we're doing an entire orange belly. The, the one that I caught, and that's me catching, I, I, ac I kind of caught it with a trick shad um, accidentally. This was earlier this spring and I was bed fishing, sight fishing. And I was on a particular mountain lake that's just filled with yellow perch. And there's a lot of those lakes in the, uh, the southeast in the Appalachians that have yellow perch. But I, this is more a size reference than it is an actual model reference because the perch that's in the picture is a little bit greener, darker on top. And um, I really like a little bit more yellow, although I'm mixing in the green in these um, shifter paints now. But it's going to get green a little bit as I'm doing some of the um, the tin green, which is on. Uh, there's a couple of different sets that I use primarily from the shifters. I've used all three sets, but the problem with this, there's always a downside, right? So you can only get these shifters in 
sets of six. You can't, they won't sell single bottles and they never sell anything that's less than or more than the little teeny bottle that you see me using here. So, unfortunately, or fortunately, you have to get a lot of other colors that you may or may not want or use um, in order to find the ones that you do like. But it's still worth the purchase. I think they're between $26 and $36 for six paints in the set. Um, which is the, a little goes a long way so the mica that they use I don't know where it comes from but it's super super fine and it just um, it shoots very well through the airbrush it's peck fin time so I'm gonna be adding in the red to the pectoral fins and then just a little section underneath the, uh, the belly and you'll notice that these molds and Mike has said that before these molds are a little cruder um, than some of the uh, resin molds. with the bull shad resin line that are available between our resin baits and also the, uh, the silicone burritos and nachos that we carry. And now I'm shifting into orange. So I only did the red red on the pectoral fin. And I'm gonna clean that up just a little bit. Just gonna go back with some white a little bit later on in the video. Um, but now I'm adding in that splash that you see around the throat and then just a little bit on the tail. I did not do this whole thing in orange like you see in the picture on the top right of the screen. Specifically because I wanted a little bit more of a, a faded out pattern. References are great and you can get really dialed in and specific with them or you can use them for what they are, just a reference and then you can imagine your own pattern from that. Um, I kind of fall somewhere in the middle, I think, usually. Just wanna give you guys a product that um, hopefully serves as a template for you to build on. Um, I, there's a lot of controversy that goes back and forth with, you know, oh, this pattern's ripped off and that pattern's ripped off. I do see it on occasion, but it's few and far between usually, and the ones that are doing may not even realize that they do it because they see something like my video and they watch it and they want to reproduce it. Um, it kind of gets in the weeds when you sell that as your own original pattern. Um, but you know what? I've never really cared too much. Some people do. Some people don't. Um, but that's just, that's just the way it is. Folks, there's only so many colors in the color wheel. So, you know, a perch is a perch is a perch. There's different little ways of doing it, but just try and be as unique as you can in your work as you go along. Not to say that I don't want you to follow my references. Absolutely I do. I wouldn't be here if I was worried about stuff like that. I really genuinely like teaching you guys how to paint these baits. So these are the eyes that Mike uses, and I don't know that I've ever actually cut them on camera before, but they are like little doll eyes and like teddy bear eyes, things like that, They're animal eyes. And that's just a little bit closer of a look. Boy, my hands are dirty. Dang. Need to wear gloves on both hands, huh? And there's that shift focus that just doesn't want to, like it was in focus at the beginning. And then some cutters. These are channel locks, which are probably the best in the market that, um, Mike's crew uses them for everything so this is the pattern we're gonna put the eyes in and have a little bit of fun with that and I hope that you guys have enjoyed watching this video with me today I've really enjoyed teaching you I uh, I love being back you guys have mentioned that hey so glad that your channels rolling again I really missed it um, if for no other reason, because I don't make a whole lot of money on this stuff, if for no other reason, I really genuinely love teaching you guys, and I hope that, that helps you in your journey of whatever it is you do with this, whether it's just 
hobby and you want to make a few baits for yourself and see if you can catch some fish with it or if you want to get a little bit further along in airbrushing because there's just so much you can do aside from fishing uh, with these with these airbrush lessons there's so many avenues you can pursue with an airbrush so I hope that I'm able to help you out just a little bit here folks and um, thanks for watching as always cheers and happy casting from Jekyll Bates and I will see you on the next video I'm gonna put the last of the eyes in I usually do one side at a time and let them dry and I am stopping the camera just to let you know um, in between because I want those eyes to set in because if you flip the bait over too quick um, sometimes the eyes will fall out usually they're pretty snug usually Mike drills these um, he drills them pretty pretty good but on occasion they will come out so you want to let that uh, you want to let that set Just for a little bit, let that uh, super glue harden up. Whatever super glue you use, some people use the gel. I like the the blue Loctite. Just seems to set the fastest. And that's it, folks. Here's a look at the bait. You can see those those gold tips in the lines. And uh, I really hope you guys have enjoyed this. I love being back, and I will see you on the next video. Have a great day wherever it is you are in the world.